So uh, I'm here with Susan Sarandon. Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, we're here for the climate concert. Uh, our well, I think it's a bigger, it's, it is the climate concert, but it was also, the idea was to get a lot of different people that represent different components mm -hmm. of different issues also. So we have indigenous people and we have nurses and Danny Glover's coming, Black Lives Matter is represented to say that we're all still here we're all committed. We're working on different things that, that Bernie has ignited this spark and we're not letting that go. And that for anyone who thought this was a cult of personality, you're wrong. People are committed and not only that, but we're here to support each other and have each other's backs. So that, you know, when somebody needs somebody for the environment, we can get the nurses and everybody over there and we'll be trying to in some way you know, make this a, even a bigger, stronger movement than what we had before. Sounds like building a coalition that, despite who's the president, which is not going to be Bernie at this point, this is beyond electoral well, politics. Despite the president, because it's not going to really matter. The, the, these pressing issues of health care and TPP, fracking, have not been sufficiently answered by any of the candidates. So uh, it's important to know that this army is going to continue, and uh, we're not you know, resting on anything on, on this election, that this was just, when we said it was a movement and not a moment, we meant it. And, uh, and so we're committed to, to being strong and to follow through, and especially on social justice, economic justice, because, I mean, the racism feeds into the water problems, feeds into, you know, they're all connected, so it's not really a stretch to, to commit to working on these things together. As someone who's been on the forefront against the establishment, whether it was the Iraq war and them pushing that lie and other things, what do you, what do you make of what we've seen in the last few days? You have these leaks that came out telling us what we already knew. Now yeah. Debbie Wasserman Schultz has resigned and is going to yeah. be serving as an honorary chair to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that's so disgusting. Um, all right, you know, really, I think what the critical question is, does it matter? You know, I mean, Nixon resigned when they broke into the headquarters. And now you find out all this tampering went on. And I know there are lawsuits and things. And I think we have to really ask what's happened to us in terms of what we're willing to sacrifice to get our person in. Or does, you know, what does it really say about us if this goes by unattended? Just like what does it say, you know, when someone's killed by the police and they get off, you know. It, it shows you as a, as a culture, as a society, where your values are. And so I'm really, no, it doesn't come. I mean, I mean, I could tell you so many more things that happened on the road in terms of, uh, well, I mean, just things like Bernie not being able to get a table inside with his information at certain places, or what happened in New York, 137, 131,000 just in Brooklyn alone. You know, what happened to when that, that couldn't vote? Mm -hmm. Names disappeared. In Brooklyn. Uh, in Brooklyn, just in Brooklyn, let alone all the people that went and were registered as Republicans. And, you know, everything that happened in California when I was going door to door and then people show up and they're given provisional ballots instead of the other ballots and people reporting. I mean, we wouldn't know these things if it weren't for the internet. And we wouldn't know these things if it weren't for body cams. And we wouldn't know if we weren't able to talk to each other. So that's a great thing. But it doesn't come as a surprise because all along, there were these efforts to thwart communication or uh, from the de when the debates were scheduled. I mean, like, you know. Or coming out on national TV saying chairs were thrown at the Nevada convention. Oh, yeah, well, you guys were very good about showing, you know, where is the video? Everyone's got a camera, where are the, <laughs> the chairs thrown? But then people pick these things up and they're never rectified because as you saw from these emails when you're, got CNN and MSNBC and all those that are in collusion, basically. Um, everyone's afraid. And uh, it's, it's really encouraging that you guys exist and that you're, and Amy, who's here, you know, exists. And, and we can get some information to people that are interested. But you've got other people that are kind of on a loop just watching these same things, the same framing over and over again. But the good news is, you know, people are awake and they feel empowered, mm -hmm. and they feel angry, and um, they're awakened to new possibilities in terms of how things can come down. And so I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. I'm really loving all these young people, yeah. my sons here, you know, that, that are like, 
no, I'm not accepting this, you know, that's a really good thing because that's how this country was built and, and we have to go back to, to that and questioning everything. And last question, uh, you saw Donald Trump uh, speak. No, I didn't. Oh, you did okay. I well, didn't watch any of the Republicans, I just didn't find the need to okay. see it. I saw the replay of Cruz, mm -hmm. yeah. that was pretty fun. <laughs> I'll tell, you the, I'll tell you the cliff notes. He, he talked about uh, nationalism versus globalism, like th threw out the law and order bit, which is obviously coded language, um, and is now capitalizing, trying to come off like a populist that, you know, the Democrats were against Bernie and Bernie's people come to me. Uh, I'm not asking for a soundbite here, but do you think people, uh, what, do you, what do you suggest to people who are, are open to this man who's basically calling for nativism? I don't even know what nativism is. I mean, I like the idea that he's not an interventionist because I think we've had enough of that. We have to look for other solutions. Um, I, you know, to who listens to, I don't, I don't know. There's certain people, a lot of people felt disenfranchised. A lot of people are working so hard and getting nowhere. A lot of people, uh, you know, are, are sick with politics the way it is. And Bernie and Trump spoke to those people. Right. But they're, it's like, the dark and the light, you know, it's like the evil and the, I mean, I mean, so will some of those people go over to the dark side? I don't know. People are angry. You know, who will turn out to vote? I don't know. Where do people go? I'm, you know, I think you have to vote your conscience and you have to, uh, do I sound like Cruz? You have to vote your yeah. conscience. Um, but I, I do think that, um, you know, I, I'm waiting to, um, hear something that speaks to me. There's still a few months, you know, what about TPP? That's a really pressing, pressing thing. Fracking, really, really, those are the two big ones, big ones. You just picked the vice president who, as of Thursday, said he was for TPP. Yeah, well, she hasn't said she's not, has she? Yeah. And says president. it was the gold standard, but now it's not. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't hear anybody addressing that. It certainly wasn't allowed in the platform. So I'm waiting to hear that stuff. That really matters to me. You know, I don't like the idea of a no-fly zone over Syria. I don't like Henry Kissinger butting in on this stuff. So I, you know, I'm open. I'm waiting. I, if she has something that she can buy me, but I'm not buying her till she offers me something. But, you know, I don't know when, when New York got robbed of all its votes, the DNC wasn't particularly upset, so maybe they don't care about New York. Apparently not. Apparently not. Trump's, Trump's only down 12 points, last poll I saw. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. In New York? In New York, which is shocking. So. I don't know. This whole thing's pretty shocking. I think I'm, it's an interesting time to be alive, don't you think? Aren't you happy you're doing these interviews? Think of the luckiest it would be <laughs> if all this wasn't going on. Well, uh, it's just great to see thousands of Bernie Sanders supporters still motivated out yes, here. They are. We are still here. We are alive and we are empowered. So it is good. Thanks, Susan. Appreciate you're it. Welcome.